When was the last time you actually counted the cost of following Christ? To take your cross and follow him. You know, it's, a, it's an interesting thought. You know, often we sit there and say, yeah, we're willing to live for Jesus, but are we willing to die for him? In Matthew chapter 10, when Jesus sends out his 12, he gives them some pretty clear understanding of what it is to follow him. And I think it's really pertinent to where we are in society. That as Christians, we need to wake up. This is what it says, starting at verse 1. Jesus calls his disciples to him and gave him the authority to drive out impure spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. If we're a Christian, this is our authority to be Christ on earth, to share the love, to share the, the, the healing, the freedom that following Jesus, that comes with following Jesus. But to follow Jesus is much more than that. As Jesus sends out his disciples, he gives them this thought. Verse 16, I'm sending you out like sheep among wolves. Therefore, be shrewd as snakes and as innocent as doves. Be on your guard. You will be handed over to the local councils and flogged in the synagogues. On my account, you will be brought before governors and kings as witnesses to them and to the Gentiles. But when they arrest you, don't worry about what you will say. At that time, you will be given the words to say, for it will not be you speaking, but the spirit of your father speaking through you. Our mission to the rest of this world is to be Christ. Too many times we get in the way. We want the glory. We want the desire. And in this world, we need to make sure that we're not the ones signing through. It's not our words, but it's the truth that only comes from God. This morning I woke up, though, and this verse was on my mind. Because this is where we are now. Verse 21. Brother will betray brother to death, and a father his child. Children will rebel against their parents and have them be put to death. You will be hated by everyone because of me, but to the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. When you are persecuted in one place, flee to another. Truly, I tell you, you will not finish going through the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. We have a mission, and it's going to get hard. What we're seeing right now are just birth pains of what persecution really looks like. My sons, pay attention. Keep your heart in tune with what the truth of the gospel says. The rest of you, be aware that there is an enemy that wants your soul. There's an enemy who wants to destroy you at any cost. Stay true, stay firm, stay strong. Verse 24. A student is not above the teachings, nor a servant above his masters. It's enough for a student to be like their teacher and a servant like their master. If they did this to Jesus, if they persecuted him and hated him for the truth that he was sharing, for the love that he was sharing, why do we think that anything different will come to us? It just keeps going over and over and over again about what it is to follow Jesus. Following Jesus is not an easy road. It's not an easy path. Jesus says that the way is narrow and the road is broad. Which path are you on? Are you on the narrow road following Jesus, living each and every day for him? Or are you on the broad road, aligning with what popular thought is? I guarantee if you are on the narrow road and you're abiding by what God says, the truth that we find in God's word, you will be persecuted. You will be hated. And often by those that are closest related to you. Stand true. Stand firm. 
and your reward will be great in God's kingdom. Until next time.